This is an explanation of how to calculate raw material costs in custom blown film. I'm not going to talk about allocation of cost burden or indirect costs, simply direct costs. Now the operating cycle of a custom blown film operation is the same as any other custom risky business. You take some cash, you buy some raw materials, you transform them into something of greater value. You get the specs from the customer, quote the job, make the product, ship it, and get paid for it. Simple and routine, right? To use the analogy of a custom baker, if the taste, the color, or anything else is off, well, Bridezilla is going to insist on a do-over at the baker's expense. If a pan of mix drops due to a power failure or somebody opening the oven door, the baker has to do it over at his expense till he gets it right. Now, unless your customer is the Department of Defense or pays for certain overruns, you don't get to charge for contingent extra scrap. It's called free enterprise. It's enterprising for the manufacturer and free to the customer. To calculate the cost of goods sold, you simply figure out the average cost of the blend of raw materials. Basing it on 100 pounds of resin is a good place to start. It looks like this. Now this is an actual case. We have a customer who asks us for a, a quote on some white film for making shipping sacks. We start out with 100 pounds of a combination of fractional melt and octane. And because it's a white shipping sack, we have to add in white color concentrate. And since there's a lot of linear low in it, we have to put in processing aid. And we have to put in anti-block and ultraviolet inhibitor. Now, we add all these up, swirl them together, and look what happens to the raw material cost. You add another 10 cents a pound to it, it gets even worse. Now, this is something from real life. We had a customer who buys a lot of clear film and wanted to quote on some lawn and garden film. He just didn't understand why it would cost that much more. Anyway, you figure out your raw material costs, add 28 25 cents a pound, that's your break even, and quote the price, right? Simple. Well, there's a problem. Unlike the baker or the bag maker who can call a timeout, extrusion is a continuous process. Customers will not accept transition material. While the extruder is waiting for the new material to come through, all the cash is turning into nothing but trash, to quote the old Steve Miller song. The hidden cost of the setup scrap is not the only cost that must be picked up in the cost of goods, goods sold. Here is an extension, extensive reason for scrap. Let's see, we, uh, the blender malfunctioned, the bubble popped, we have a bubble surge carbon in the roll, carbon in the die lip changing resin, color change, color cleaning, color and roll, crush cores, uh, cut over scrap, die lines, edge fold, extruder kickoff, gauge blends, gauge under target, gels, gauge over target, loose wind on the roll, lost film, low, low temperature in the extruder. Operator used the wrong size, the, oh, power failure, that's a good one. Previous ship set, set up, and let's see, ran out of resin, it happens sometimes. The roll shoots out out of the side. Um, screen change, the bridge in the screw, scuffed roll, setup scrap. The roll, the bubble just snapped off, not just a hole in it. Telescoped rolls, temperature overrun. You have to wait for the temp for the extruder to cool off. Uh, treatment too low, treatment too high. Treater kicked off film wrapped around the nips, uh, wet resin, 
and winder malfunction, wrap nips, it goes on and on. February was a good month. We shipped 730,000 pounds of finished goods and we had 30,592 pounds of scrap. Now, of that, about 17,000 pounds was set up or transition scrap. Two other factors which must be taken into account are the internal reject rate and the rejection rate from the customer. Now, it's not possible to QC every single foot of film while it's running. So things like corona treatment have to be checked at the end of the roll. In the case of some big rolls like this, the power was off a little bit, the treatment was just a little bit marginal. Well, the customer's not going to work through it, so I don't know, there's probably $1,200 worth of raw material just in this. This looks like a pretty good roll of film, but there's a little gauge band here and it makes the rolls camber to one side. Not acceptable. We ran this after this red, some of the color concentrate got hung up in the extruder and broke loose. You can't ex expect the bag maker or the laminator to just work through it. It gets relegated to scrap. Now at some point, some of you are saying, yeah, but you're not really losing money because you can internally recycle or reprocess. Now take it on faith. Not only is the finite resource of time lost, but the indirect costs are also lost. We get inquiries all the time for prototype quantities and people don't understand why a few hundred feet of film costs a thousand dollars. Well, that's because they're paying for scrap they will never see. Not so long ago, life was simpler. Resin was 25 cents a pound, and the average sale price was 50 cents a pound. A 10% scrap rate would not make a break. So we skip ahead to today. Prime resin is what, Nick? 80 cents a pound for good prime stuff? 80 cents, yeah. Yeah, okay. And we're still operating on a gross material spread of 25 cents. You don't need a master's in accounting to see the squeeze resulting from a 10% scrap rate. A few years ago, we were invited to participate in a reverse bid auction for H.J. Hines shrink wrap requirements. The starting point was 25 cents a pound over the index price for linear low density. The price went down from there, not up. They actually called and didn't understand why we did not want to participate in this wonderful volume opportunity. There's a lot more to any product than meets the eye. I hope this provides some insight as to why custom plastic is not always cheap plastic.